Congratulations. Hello, welcome back. Second hour, Applied English. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you are um, just in need of catching up on the second half of our essay that we started writing yesterday. I am live with your classmates. Everyone say, hey. My guy. Hey. My guy, absolutely. So they are here with me. Before we write our last two paragraphs, it's probably a good idea to review what we wrote yesterday. Um, let's make sure that we are on the right foot here. So you may notice we started off our essay with a heading and title. I would encourage my students with me in person right now to make sure you have the proper heading there. Upper left hand corner should be your name. Don't call yourself student example. Uh, teacher name, course, and dates. We also centered a title above our essay. We said sin and salvation. It's a nice little alliterative title. And from there, we just got into uh, drafting our paragraphs piece by piece. You guys had a decently long introduction, actually. So we've got our introduction um, right there. We're setting up the thesis that C.S. Lewis uses symbolism to show how Jesus Christ loves and saves people from sin. <laughs> and if I remember right, yesterday, we were able to get two body paragraphs done. So we're talking about symbolism. One symbol we talked about was Edmund. And then the second one, we used a paraphrase right there, by the way, to, to bring up that point. We also talked about the white witch being a symbol for Satan, and there we used a direct quote. We actually compared it to scriptures. We kind of used two direct quotes in the same paragraph, which is pretty cool. According to our outline, there should be one more symbol we're writing about. Does anyone happen to remember what that symbol is? We're writing about Aslan next? Perfect. Can someone grab the door for me? Please? So let me leave up the last little bit of our last body paragraph. Once again, if you need to catch up on this, please refer back to yesterday's video. Let's get our last body paragraph done. Just like we did yesterday for a new paragraph, we will need to go down to the next line and indent. You do not need to skip any lines uh, when you're handwriting. And I'm going to copy from my outline, from our outline, because you guys largely wrote it. Lastly, Aslan is a symbol of Jesus Christ and LWW. Let's get that down as our topic sentence. That is up on screen. Lastly, Aslan is a symbol of Jesus Christ in, oh, okay. I should spell out the text. As you guys are copying down, let me get our evidence and commentary in as well. So just like yesterday, notice that I'm doing big, just big amounts of copying and pasting at the same time. I know you guys can't do that in handwriting, so um, I'm gonna give you guys time to stop in class and to, to catch up on these things. All I'm doing is copying big sections of our outline. Then as I paste them in, I'm getting rid of the stuff I don't need. Like extra spaces. So I can get rid of Get rid of that little heading. Then move to a second page. It, we're on page two already in, in the type document. Was there more is the question. Oh, we actually need to add a quote from chapter 15. So we'll do that in a moment here. But I'll give you guys a chance to catch up right there. Friendly reminder, if you're watching this in video, uh, feel free to pause this video at any point to catch up on what you need. I'm gonna leave this up on screen for my students who are writing in class. It is a good idea to read out loud too. Uh, I think I left a note for myself to add one from 15. I've got, a, I've got a book up here, so I'll do some digging there as we copy. It is a good idea to read out loud what we have already, just to make sure it makes sense. Lastly, Aslan is a symbol of Jesus Christ in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. In chapter 14, Aslan goes to the stone table to be killed by the White Witch. He is sacrificing himself to save Edmund. Edmund should be on the stone table because he sinned by betraying his family. However, Aslan decides to forgive him by taking his place. This is just like Jesus Christ hanging on the cross to take the sins of the world. As you guys are copying that down, I need to check our outline for something real quick here. This was our paragraph that we decided needed to be a little bit longer. I did leave a note to myself that we need to mention Aslan's resurrection. So I'll see if I can find a quote from chapter 15 as you guys are copying that down. We'll finish off this paragraph together.
And there we go, y'all. So I followed our note in our, in our outline to find a direct quote from uh, chapter 15. I found one that explains how the stone table works. So with just a little more commentary, we can make the point that, uh, that Aslan is a symbol for Jesus Christ. But I'll give you guys some time to copy before I scroll down here. All we need is some, uh, some more commentary to explain this right here. We just need to explain how this makes Aslan a symbol for Christ. Uh, let's see. When a willing victim who had committed no treachery was killed in a traitor's stead, the table would crack. Um, Aslan resurrects because he, he sacrificed... And Jesus, or innocent, both of them came back. That should work. When actually, I don't even know if I need that sentence. That should be your fourth paragraph. This is a really big body paragraph, so it's probably a good idea to read it out loud just to make sure it makes sense. And we'll move on to the conclusion. Thank you. Lastly, Aslan is a symbol of Jesus Christ and the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. In chapter 14, Aslan goes to the stone table to be killed by the White Witch. He is sacrificing himself to save Edmund. Edmund should be on the stone table because he sinned by betraying his family. However, Aslan decides to forgive him by taking his place. This is just like Jesus Christ hanging on the cross to take the sins of the world. Also like Christ, Aslan comes back from the dead. The text states, when a willing victim who had committed no treachery was killed in a traitor's stead, the table would crack. Aslan resurrects because he sacrificed himself for Edmund. Like Jesus rising on the third day, Aslan rose hours after his death. Let me ask you guys, second hour, how does that feel as a full body paragraph? Does it feel like it opens and closes just fine? Yeah. You good with that, Liv? Awesome. Cool. I think I'll, let me scroll down a little bit here. Okay, um, all that remains in our essay is the conclusion. As a reminder, this is something that I kicked out to you guys as a virtual lesson last Tuesday. So if you never did that virtual lesson, you probably have nothing in your outline right there. You'll need to follow along super closely as we get this into our draft. For those of you ready for your conclusion right there, notice that I did go down to the next line and indent. The conclusion is a separate paragraph by itself. Ours probably won't be super long. This is a friendly reminder for those of you uh, following along online. Feel free to pause this video at any point for the sake of copying. I will have to cut out sections of video as I give my students in class a chance to catch up. Uh, second hour, is it okay if I scroll down a little bit so we can finish our conclusion? Yeah. So as I check my outline again, summary sentences are ones that I do not normally uh, plan out in full when I'm outlining. Right here, I need to, I just left myself a note that I need to write one summary sentence per body paragraph, looking at each bo body paragraph summary sentence for ideas. It's a little too loud. We'll continue once it's quiet. I should ask you guys, because I don't want to scroll all over the place on, um, on screen right here, as we summarize right here. Can someone remind me what we first wrote about in our body paragraphs? The witch. We wrote about the witch first. So we said that, we said that C.S. Lewis uses symbolism to carry its Christian themes. We should probably first identify what the witch symbolizes. Um, one symbol is the white witch. When we wrote about the witch in our body paragraph, did we say that she's a symbol for the devil or Satan? We said both in that paragraph? We said, okay. You said we mostly said the devil? I like to switch it up a little bit, represent Satan. Another is, who do we talk about second? Edmund. Symbolizes. What do, we, what do we say Edmund symbolizes? Sinful people. Sinful people, sinners. I'm looking for a transition right here for Aslan. Last comes Aslan. Jesus Christ. 
actually, this is something that we should probably talk about as a class. From a teacher's perspective, when, when entire classrooms are talking or in large portions of the classroom are talking, what that usually communicates to us is I'm confident in my work right now. So technically, what I could do right now is come around and say, all right, I'll collect your essay because it seems like you're done with it, right? Are you guys done with your essays yet? No. We, still have, we still have a sentence to write, right? Yeah, we haven't done our final thought yet. We're in our conclusion right now. As you're reading for your own writing, please make sure you're correcting any spelling, capitalization, punctuation. We might not have a whole lot of time to do that together. Last comes up, our final thoughts. That is our full conclusion. With our conclusion up on screen, it's probably a good idea to read it out loud to make sure it sounds right. Um, one thing that my class hasn't give us, given us a whole lot of time to do is proofread the entire essay. So I'm sorry that we can't really do that together. I would expect you to proofread this on your own. Make sure you're correcting your own mistakes in here. Let me make sure our conclusion makes sense. C.S. Lewis uses symbolism in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe to carry its Christian themes. One symbol is the White Witch, who represents Satan. Another is Edmund, who symbolizes sinners. Last comes Aslan, who is a symbol of Jesus Christ. Besides reading the Bible and listening to Sunday sermons, people can hear the gospel message through such symbols and stories. I think that's a nice, concise conclusion. I'm going to say later on, for those of you doing this online, obviously you can copy along uh, on your own line paper as you finish this essay. I do need to collect your paper copy for grading. So please make sure you are getting that done for me, and I'll collect that when I see you. Later.